Hey everyone, this is going to be a quick how-to video on setting up your own PAL world dedicated server through Steam to share with friends. There's a lot of discussion surrounding this right now and even PAL world's documentation is a little dodgy, so I'll try to keep this brief, but it just isn't as simple as it could be. Additionally, there are some considerations you need to be aware of before we begin. If you've ever hosted your own Minecraft server, we'll be treading some familiar ground. Before we begin, if this video was helpful to you or entertaining, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you back for more. Additionally, I'm doing a giveaway for Monster Hunter Wilds to the community of people who have supported this channel already. So if you want to join and you want an opportunity to be able to win yourself a copy, please take a look at the description below. So consideration number one, setting up your own dedicated server means you're going to need to keep whatever machine that's hosting the server powered on at all times. Second, you'll need access to your router and an understanding of DHCP and port forwarding to make this work. Because each router manufacturer is different, I'll only be able to provide some general steps here. Third, most residential IP addresses are dynamically assigned, meaning that your public IP address will change regularly and your friends won't be able to connect to your server when it does. More on this in a moment. Diving right in, search for PAL World in your Steam library. You'll want to locate and install PAL World Dedicated Server by typing it in the search bar. If you don't see it, you may need to run the PAL World game first. Once PAL World Dedicated Server is installed, run it once and then close out of the command prompt window. From there, right click PAL World Dedicated Server, navigate to Properties, choose Install Files from the menu on the left, and then click Browse. This will open a new explorer window where we'll need some information before we can configure our server. For the first step, right click the PAL server executable and click Properties. Under the compatibility tab, tick the box that says run this program as administrator and press OK. Next, locate the default PAL world settings.ini file in the same folder and double click it. If it asks what program to use, just use Notepad. You'll want to copy everything from the fourth line down, making sure to include the line with script pal game world settings. Then, return to the explorer window with the dedicated server and navigate to the pal folder, then saved, then config, then windows server. If you made sure to open pal world dedicated server at least once before attempting this step, you'll find a pal world settings.ini file to open. If it asks for a program to use, just use Notepad again. Here, you'll paste the text that you copied from the default PAL World Settings INI into this one. There are a few pieces of information that you'll want to configure to make the server accessible to your friends. Server name. Type the name that you want your server to have. I suggest something more unique than default PAL World Server. In this example, I'll use Coyote Canine Kingdom. Server description. Provide a description that helps your friends understand the intended purpose of your server. In this example, I'll use casual server for personal friends. Admin password. Set this for access to the console in game. Password strength isn't exactly important here, but be sure it's not something a player could easily guess. I'll use electric boogaloo. Server password. This is to password protect your server. When joining, your friends will need this password to access your server, in addition to the IP address and port. In this case, I'll use come one join to the three fun exclamation mark. Public port. This is what stumps a lot of people. I think the game is too early to bind itself to custom ports at the moment. For most, the default of 8211 is sufficient and this doesn't need to be changed, but for those of us who prefer to bind to our own ports, you'll only get connection errors and your server will be unreachable. For now, we'll need to ensure the default is left at 8211. Public IP. An easy way to locate your public IP address is to go to Google and literally type in what is my IP in the search bar. This should give you four sets of numbers separated by three periods. Your public IP address is sensitive information, so only give it out to people you trust. One drawback to this is most internet connections will rotate your IP address from time to time, and if it does, this will break your connection to your server. If your server has been running a long time and your friends can't connect, you may want to check to see if your IP address has changed and update this file accordingly. 
I'll provide an alternative solution for you before the end of the video. Go ahead and save your configuration and close the file. The next step would be to port forward through your router. Each device that connects to the internet needs an IP address. However, there is a limited number of public IP addresses out on the internet. Therefore, routers act as a means of allowing multiple devices to connect to the internet through the use of only one address. Your network in your home has numerous private addresses that then get translated into a single public address through a technology called Network Address Translation, or NAT. Without this, you'd only ever be able to connect one device to the internet at a time. Port forwarding is necessary to help ensure that this NAT record table knows which of your private addresses are available to connect to. In this case, we want our friends to be able to connect to the computer that's running the PAL world server. Just like public IP addresses might change, our private IP addresses might change too, and since our routers are doing the network address translation, the router is usually the place we'll need to configure this so that the computer that's running the server keeps the same private IP address. Once you've logged into your router, you'll want to find your network configuration settings, specifically DHCP. DHCP is the protocol responsible for giving a private address to a machine that connects to your router, whether it's by Wi-Fi or by wire. You'll need at least two pieces of information here, the IP address of the computer running the PAL world server, and its MAC address, sometimes called the hardware or physical address. To locate this, go to the start menu of the computer running your PAL world server and search for command prompt. If you can't locate this, you can hold the Windows key and press R to bring up a run prompt, where you can then type CMD and hit enter. From the command prompt window, you'll type ipconfig space slash all and hit enter. This will give you a list of your network connections and any addresses associated. Any with media state of media disconnected can be ignored, we're only interested in the connection that has an IP address associated. Once you've located the connection with an address, you'll want to note the IPv4 address and the physical address. In this example, my private IP address is 192.168.250.210, and my MAC address is FC B3 BC 437 F E7. You'll want to create an address reservation using the physical address and IP address in your DHCP server to ensure that your computer's private IP doesn't change. Next, you'll want to locate the port forwarding function of your router. This is where you'll provide an external port, internal port, and internal or private IP address. For both internal and external port, just use 8211. For IP address, use the IP address that you got from the command prompt just a moment ago. The protocol should be set to UDP and hit save. Alternatively, you could also use a DMZ, which allows all inbound connections on any port to pass through to the computer you specify. This, however, does expose that PC to anyone out on the internet, making it potentially vulnerable to attack. I recommend you use this only if you can't establish a connection through port forwarding in the prior steps. You're now ready to test the functionality of your server. Return to Steam and open Palworld Dedicated Server. Out of your options, choose Play Palworld Dedicated Server. You may see a Windows firewall pop up asking for permission. Make sure to approve the access for both public and private networks. If you see another command prompt pop up with the text setting breakpad mini dump, your server is now up and running. To verify that the server is working, you can now open Palworld to connect to your server. Navigate to join multiplayer game and tick the enter password box at the bottom before pressing connect. You'll notice that the address you're connecting to is 127.0.0.1 with a port of 8211. If you're connecting from the same computer that's hosting the server, you won't be able to connect with your public IP address. This 127.0.0.1 address is referred to as a loopback address to test a server's functionality in situations such as this. Press connect and you'll be able to provide the password that you set for your server. In this example, I'm using come one join to the three fun exclamation mark. Once connected, you should be brought to the character creation screen. Congratulations, you are now ready to provide your public IP address and password for your friends to connect to. Now, for the problem with a dynamic IP address. If you don't want to have to update your Palworld dedicated server configuration every time your ISP gives you a new public IP address, there's a free solution that should work for just about everyone, provided your router supports it. 
When we go to a web page, we're not typing the IP address for Google, we just type in www.google.com and the browser knows where to go. That's because there's a protocol called Domain Name System, or DNS for short, that does the translating for you. A name like Google can be registered with DNS, so a browser going to Google can translate the name into Google's public IP address all behind the scenes. This requires a static IP address that doesn't change and is usually expensive. Dynamic DNS is a type of DNS that can be set up to do effectively the same thing, even if your IP address changes. I personally use no IP where I can create a free account and register a domain under that account. This allows me to create an easy to remember name for people to connect to, regardless of my public IP address. In this example, I'll use coyote-k9-kingdom.ddns.net. We can then take this information back to our router and find the settings for dynamic DNS or DDNS. We'll then log in with the dynamic DNS account we created. It can take an hour or more for your name to be accessible. Once configured in DNS and in your router, you can verify your DNS name is resolving to your IP address properly by opening command prompt again and typing PING space and then the DNS name that you just created. In my example, we would be using ping coyote k9 kingdom.ddns.net. If you receive replies from an IP address, the IP should match the public IP address you found from searching Google for what is my IP. If you don't receive replies or the replies time out, try rebooting your router, modem, and computer before attempting the ping again. Next, go back to palworldsettings.ini by right-clicking Palworld Dedicated Server in Steam, navigating to Properties, choose Installed Files from the menu on the left, then click Browse. Again, use Notepad if Windows asks you for a program to open palworldsettings.ini with. Here, we want to return to public IP where we'll remove the IP address we supplied earlier, and instead, we'll put in the DNS name we set up. For me, this would be coyote-k9-kingdom.ddns.net. Choose Save, close out of Notepad, close out of the Palworld dedicated server if you haven't done so already, and then reopen the Palworld dedicated server, choosing Play Palworld dedicated server from the options. Now, you can give your friends a cool address and password to connect to in Palworld, instead of using the IP address we used before. Just make sure that you include the colon 8211 with the address. And that about does it. If you have questions on the process, make sure to comment below. I can only help so much what with how everyone's network and ISP are different, but I'll try to provide as much clarity as I can. On screen, there's a playlist with all my other Pal World videos, as well as a playlist of the majority of the content where I've been busy theorycrafting on all things Monster Hunter Wilds with the community. We also have great membership perks to show off your support, so if this video was helpful for you, I would love to see you join your fellow pack members. Until the next video, I'll see you in the comments below.